So what I'm going to do is to open my event. There's two separate events in here. One is a trip to the bowling alley for a bowling party and one of them is a swim meet. So I'm going to select some pictures from both of those events for my calendar. So all I need to do is click on the pictures that I want to include and if you hold your command key down then you can pick pictures that are not consecutive pictures that have others in between that I really don't want for my calendar. So I'm going to come through and pick these and pick this one. And since this is right next to it, I'm going to hold my shift key down and select this one and this one. Back to my command key and select this. So when they're non-consecutive, use your command key. Now that's the last of the bowling alley pictures. And now we go into our swim meet and I'm going to cuddle it pictures from the swim meet and things that I think will may be cute for my album or my, I'm sorry my calendar and I'm going to go through and pick some more now I just want a few just to give you the idea of how to do a calendar so I'm not going to spend a lot of time choosing pictures but I do want you to see how you just go through and select the ones you want. Now to make things go a lot faster you should enhance your pictures if you want to before you select them for your calendar rather than try to do it as you're making your calendar. I think that's a lot more time consuming. So I'm just about through here picking up pictures. Here's some cute sky writing pictures that uh, I took and we're down here and here. I'm going to pick a couple more. Here's my nephew or my grandson swimming for his life and there he is at the edge of the pool. So he made it. He made it. And pick a couple more and that's the end. Now what I'm going to do is go up under file and select new album. I'm going to give my album a name and this is the name that will be on your calendar but you can change it later if you wish. I'm going to put bowling and swim meet. Now I'm going to select the create button down here in the lower right and I'm going to select calendar. iPhoto has a, several calendar themes and you can flip through them one at a time and down here it shows the layout that goes along with that theme and what your photos might look like. This is colored paper. Now I already know that I want the kids theme for my calendar. So this is what the layouts will look like. This tells you the theme, kids, the size, 13 by 10 inches. Each page is 13 by 10 inches. Price is $19.99 for, I think that's 20 pages. If you have more pages in your calendar, then it's $1.49 for each extra month. I'm going to come over here and click Create. This tells me the month that I want to start on. I can select any month of the year to start. And the number of months, you have a range of 12, 13, all the way up to 24. I'm going to set mine back to just 12 months. Now I'm going to choose holidays. I would like my calendar to have all the holidays on it. Here you can select show birthdays from contacts and if this is a calendar you're doing for yourself you may want to do that so you have people's birthdays shown on the calendar. If you're giving this away to somebody else you might not want to select that because chances are whoever you give it to really doesn't care when John Smith's birthday is. So if you click OK and now it automatically laid out all of your pictures into the different months. And if you don't want it to automatically choose where to put the pictures, then you go under your options and you go under calendar settings and you can unclick auto layout pages. Then that means that you will have to put the pictures in every little picture frame, which is a lot more time consuming. So what I like to do is go ahead and let iPhoto lay it out and put the pictures where they want. And then if there's a few I want to change, I can go in and change it, which is a lot quicker than trying to decide a picture for every single uh, page. 
So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to use the January layout as my um, te teaching page. So here's up here is your layout and up here is your background choices. Now this page, as you can see, has four pictures on it. I can change that to one photo. So say I want to just have it like that. And now this allows me to write a description. So I'm going to say bowling adventure for this picture. And if I don't like that font, I can choose a different font. I can make it bigger. I can, well, it's already in the center. I can put it off to the right if I, or left, I'm sorry, if I wanted to, or way to the right. And I'm going to show different, I might want to say in red text. And I'm center this again. So that allows me to change my text in several different ways so that it looks the way I want it to. Now, I'm going to go back to layout and I'm going to choose a different color. Say I don't like this yellow color, but I really like purple. And change this and make it a purple layout. And so it'll, you have a lot of flexibility when making your calendar. And you should play around with it, change your backgrounds, um, do whatever you want to do to experiment around. Now, as you can see, I can only see half of my calendar, the top part. I can use this button here to zoom out. And so I can see both the top and the bottom of each month. But it's very small, so it's a lot harder to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and make it big. And if I want to work on the bottom part, I'm just going to move this down. Now, January 20th are my grandson's grandkids' birthday. I want to add a photo to that to kind of so that you'll know when their birthday is. And so I'm going to put a picture in there of the two of them just as a birthday shot. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this shot. You can see when you click on it, click and hold, a yellow uh, line appears around it, and I'm going to drag it over to the 20th, and a yellow line appears around the 20th, that date. Now then, this is they're a little bit lost in this picture, so I want to make it a little bigger so you can see more of them and less of the background, and I can move it around, just hold it. Hold the mouse button down and move it around. I'll make it make it a little bit bigger, like this. And I'm going to put a caption. So instead, I'm going to put it above their picture, and I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to put Nick and Ellery's birthday. Great. There now, Nick and Ellery's birthday. And again, if I don't like that text, that's pretty big. I can make that a little bit smaller. I'm going to go back down to my um, marker felt and I'm going to make it about a nine point so that it's not quite so big. And there, Nick and Ellery's birthday. So now I've got my calendar. I've got this. I'm going to go back and look at all my pages. Now, this one has several different photos on one page. And if I, as you can see, this overlaps this, and this overlaps this. Say I wanted this one to be more prominent, I can left click on it and put send to back. Whoops, I'm sorry, move to the front. And now this is more prominent. It overlaps this and this. And I can make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make this one a little bigger. I don't need all those people on the side to be showing. I just want to focus more on my grandson. And this also. I can move him here. Now you can do some fun things. You can change the effect of the picture. I can make it an antique. I could go in and make this one a sepia tone. I could make this one a black and white. And that gives you a different look. And kind of creates a little interest in your calendar. Now. If I wanted to edit this photo, say I didn't like it, I thought I was done with it, but I really didn't like it, 
I can check edit photo over here. This takes me back into iPhoto. I can enhance it a little bit. I can crop it. I can make this so that she's pretty much just the whole center point of this picture like this. And that's done. I can go in and adjust the color a little bit more. A little bit. Whoops. There we go. Maybe a little more contrast. Anything to make that stand out just a little more. Now I'm going to select this button back here, back to calendar. And there you go. We got her all nice and framed very, very nicely in that photo. Now then, I think you've got a good idea on how to make your calendar. At this point, I'm going to look at all pages again. I'm going to decide if this is the way I want my calendar to be. And if it is, let's see, I'm going to change this one just a little bit. I think I'm going to pull her down a little so you get more like that. Okay. Now say for some reason I didn't want this picture here. I've got this picture. I'm going to go to my photos. And I'm going to, this one doesn't have, well, if they don't, if they're not checked, that means they were not used in the photo, in the calendar. iPhoto didn't use them all. So I could bring this one in and substitute it right here, say. And now I've got a different picture there. So it's really easy to change your pictures, move them around, eliminate them. If I want to swap this one for this, I go like this, and that swaps them over. Now I'm going to take one last look. Yes, I like all my pictures. I like the layouts. I like the arrangements. They all look good. And now I can hit Buy Calendar. Another thing that you can do also is to go ahead and hit Print. If you want to print it out yourself to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like, come down here to your PDF setting and select Save as a PDF. And even though, and so we're going to save it, even though it says print, what it's really doing is saving it as a PDF. You can then open it up and print it out and take a look at it. So if you may, if you want to keep a copy of this calendar for yourself and give away the, the nicely bound one, then this is a good way to avoid another $20 charge.